we have a user class and inside of a user class, you can also have what are known as initializer blocks. And these initializer blocks are created with the init keyword and open and close curly brace. So this would be perhaps somewhere where you could perform some type of initialization for your class. Initializer blocks are called after the primary constructor has been invoked. So again, this is the primary constructor up here. So after the primary constructor has been invoked, the initializer block will be called. So something interesting that we can do is we can just go back to our main file here and we'll create an instance of our user class. And then we'll just say Don Filker here for the first and the last name. And we're gonna run it. Now we're not putting it into the screen here, but notice how we do see hello one is output down here in the run window. The reason for that is because in the user class inside the initializer block, I'm printing out hello one. Now there's also something interesting you can do with initializer blocks as well. You can have multiple initializer blocks and this initializer blocks will then operate in the order in which they are defined within the class. So what will happen is the primary constructor will be called first and last name, and then we'll get hello one called and then hello two. So if we go back and rerun this here, what we're going to see instead of hello one, we'll see hello one and hello two, as we see down here. If we go back to the user class just to demonstrate this and we move this below hello two and we rerun this, what we'll then notice is we'll see hello two show up before hello one. Now, one last thing here too, just to demonstrate that the initializer blocks are called right after the primary constructor. Let's go ahead and create another constructor that just perhaps provides the first name, which is a string. And then it's just going to default the last name for us. So we're going to call into this, pass in the first name, and then the last name will just default to Felker here. And if I go back to this here, I'll get rid of my last name, which will then use that second constructor here, which we could see here. Now what's going to happen is uh, we can actually provide a, a block here so we can do something after this constructor's call. So let's do that here. Set constructor, uh, you know, second constructor call. So we'll say here. So our expected output at this time when we create a new class, you might think would be, uh, okay, we're going to call the second constructor called. And then, of course, it's going to be the primary constructor. And then we'll get basically hello one, hello two, because that's the order they show up in. However, what you'll notice if we run this, that's not the case. And as you can see here, it's actually a little backwards. We have hello one, hello two, and then second constructor called. So it seems kind of backwards, but when you think about the execution of the actual class, the this here is called immediately. So as soon as this constructor is called, immediately those values are passed into the primary constructor. And then after the primary constructor is called, the initializer blocks are then called. After those are called, then execution will return to inside of the cons whatever constructor you're in, which is, this is the second one here into that block there and it'll execute that, which is why we see hello one, hello two. And then finally, the second constructor is called. Now you can use the initializer blocks to perform some type of initialization for your class, perhaps some basic setup of the class, some you know, initialization type of tasks are a great place to put it inside the init block.